It was a proud moment for SpaceX and its CEO Elon Musk, who managed to pull off a near-perfect launch and landing of its Starship prototype SN15. Aside from a small and manageable post-landing fire, SN15's maiden flight went pretty smoothly, but its job is not over yet. According to a tweet by Mr. Musk earlier last month, said the company might try to refly SN15 soon. A demonstration of SpaceX to show reusability of Starship prototype before the Moon and Mars missions. But before we dig in, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel to stay updated to all Starship launches and other exciting news in the space industry. And we'll keep bringing you quality content every week. So, let's dive in. Following its successful launch and landing, Starship SN15 has been placed back onto a launch mount for inspections and a potential reflight. The upcoming test schedule will be focused on providing a green light for an orbital attempt that has already been filed with the FCC, and SpaceX is awaiting approval. Though the SN15 vehicle is expected to fly once again, the decision is likely pending due to a mandatory full inspection of the vehicle, including its engines, landing legs, and heat shield system which were affected during the previous flight. Reflying SN15 would be an attractive option for SpaceX, a milestone that allows the company to achieve its reusability objectives. It would also allow for additional flight data that could be incorporated into the potential flight of SN16 and beyond. The day after Starship SN15 was reinstalled on a launch mount, giving SpaceX unrestricted access to its aft and other major structures, all three of the rocket's flight-proven Raptor engines were removed from the prototype. Raptor is a family of full-flow, staged combustion cycle rocket engines developed and manufactured by SpaceX for use on the in-development Starship launch vehicle. The engines are powered by chirogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen and have more than twice the thrust of SpaceX Merlin engine that powers their current Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. Given the significant value of tearing down and inspecting the first flight proven high-altitude Raptors, that removal was likely guaranteed regardless of the future of SN15, though it certainly left the Starship at a crossroads. Apart from updates in Raptors, SpaceX also proceeded to remove the landing legs of SN15 as they have been partially crushed upon landing and needed refurbishment. Initially, SpaceX decided to use the same legs after repairs and upgrades, but later they changed their stance. Though the legs were capable of being used for the second time after maintenance, the SpaceX team has now decided to stay on the safer end and will proceed with completely new legs for the relaunch if that happens. But after having its six used legs removed, Starship SN15 was left more or less declawed on the launch mount, as fans watched with bated breath to see if new legs or engines would be reinstalled. For better or worse, while CEO Elon Musk did indicate that SpaceX might try to refly SN15 soon, less than two days after its historic landing, it quickly became clear that the company has decided against reuse. To a certain degree, especially if SN15's flight-proven Raptor Rangers were rendered unusable, as they appear to have been, as they have been exposed to water immediately after the touchdown. Therefore, reusing the Starship would be more symbolic than anything. With a thorough inspection, it would be easy enough to determine that the Starship's structures and mechanical and hydraulic systems would be up for a second launch, but the slow, roughly 10km flight profile ships SN8 through SN11 and SN15 completed was already only relevant for testing Starship's exotic, unproven method of landing. Therefore, the only logical reason to relaunch SN15 is if SpaceX aims for a higher altitude with its second launch. In that sense, another fully successful near 10km launch and landing would only benefit Starship development insofar as it would only increase confidence in the landing profile by providing that the first success wasn't a fluke. 
However, that is supposed to be a highly unlikely thing to happen. SpaceX also has no plans to recover the first space-proven starship. Instead, normally performing a soft landing in the Pacific Ocean if the prototype makes it through its inaugural spaceflight without any issue. If that orbital test flight is a perfect success, SpaceX will likely have enough confidence and regulators enough data to proceed to the first attempt of recovering an orbital starship on land. In the meantime, with orbital launch site build up now moving at a breakneck pace and tens of millions of dollars of custom paid hardware, giant cranes and months of work sitting a few hundred feet away from the landing pad, attempting to push the envelope with SN15 likely just isn't worth the risk. SN15 is also a historic piece of hardware after its successful landing and there are signs that the spaceship will be put on permanent display beside the factory that built it. There's a limited possibility that SN16 could be sent to the launch site instead of heading straight to the scrapyard. But any testing would necessarily delay orbital pad construction. And any flight activity would likely have to expend SN16 in the ocean rather than risk a land landing. Ultimately, it's looking more and more likely that SpaceX would go rather all-in on Starship's inaugural orbit launch attempt even if it means little to no ground or flight test availability for a few months. Concluding the Starship High Altitude tests via SN15's success allows for a focus on the next major milestone of pushing the vehicle into orbit. This test objective had already been indicated in SpaceX's documentation, as it involves Super Heavy BN3 and Starship SN20 with a goal to get to orbit by July 1st. While that date will be ruled out by the huge amount of groundwork required to be able to give a green signal for the launch, the potential of such a test flight before or around the fall would be a massive success. All the key elements are currently in play, with sections of Starship SN20, should that be the vehicle to conduct the test, already spotted several weeks ago, along with the BN3 sections that are now being stacked behind SN16 in the high bay. The complete Super Heavy Starship stack will be kept at the orbital launch site instead of the suborbital site utilized during the initial test program. As with most of the facilities at Starbase, construction has been initiated at a full pace, highlighted by the raising of the launch integration tower. A third section was added to the tower this past week, with several additional prefabricated sections yet to be added. The tower will eventually become the tallest structure in the South Padre Island region and is expected to be the biggest rocket booster ever, having twice the thrust of a Saturn V rocket. The upcoming SN20 is expected to be the first Starship test vehicle that will be powered by the Super Heavy Booster and is also expected to be the first Starship prototype to reach orbit. The documents have already been filed with the FCC for SN20's approval as well. And this filing included an exhibit document from SpaceX detailing some general parameters for the flight. The Super Heavy Booster BN3 also known as the first stage and Starship's second stage is expected to separate about 170 seconds into flight, after which the booster is to return for soft landing about 20 or roughly 32 kilometers offshore from the Boca Chica, Texas launch site. Meanwhile, the Starship vehicle itself is expected to continue on over Florida, straight to orbital heights and velocities before attempting re-entry and a soft controlled ocean landing 62 miles 100 kilometers, from the northernmost island of Hawaii, Kauai. On the timetable of all the events included, it is notable that the Super Heavy Booster Ocean Landing is described as a touchdown, while the Starship Ocean Landing is described as a splashdown. No mention of recovery operations was mentioned in the document, and the only vessels capable of landing the Super Heavy Booster at sea are retired oil drilling platforms still undergoing retrofits at ports in Texas and Louisiana for potential use. It is not yet clear whether or not SpaceX will proceed with SN15's relaunch, but we are all eagerly looking forward to July 1st to witness the SpaceX's first ever orbital launch attempt powered by its next generation Super Heavy Booster. If you liked this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel for the latest updates on all upcoming Starship test flights. Until next time, bye for now.